What is happening? What's going down? It's your boy Robbie D along with this beautiful young lady. Please introduce yourself. Hey, what up y'all? I'm Angie the Hip Hop Angel representing. Please tell them who we are sitting here with today. We're sitting here with the legendary Traxter. What up Traxter? I'm good. I'm good. What's hey. happening? Yeah. yeah Midwest <laughs> in the place. Yeah, we down in the 80, but you know. Yeah. Can we do something first? Let's start at the beginning. I mean, when did you realize that you was a legendary producer, the legendary <laughs> trackster? I mean, because, I mean, it's not just something that just happens overnight. I mean, it had to have been a progression, you know? Yeah, it definitely was. Like, when I started, uh, I think I started as a DJ, um, doing the house parties in the hood and that whole thing. Right. And then it went from there to uh, all my homies for graduation in grammar school we got keyboards and they were taking music lessons and stuff like that. So. I didn't want to get left out, so I asked my mother for a keyboard. Yeah, she bought it. You know what I'm saying? Did what she had to do to get it for me. You know what I'm saying? I, and that's why. Thanks, I mean, mom. Yeah, thanks real supportive. support. <laughs> yeah, a lot of support from mom. That was real important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Any, any, anything that I creatively I wanted to do, she did what she had to do to make make it happen. So, right. and it went from there to uh, I wrote my first rhyme, and um, when I did that, um, I had to make beats to you know with the keyboard to try to get that whole thing going went on and on and eventually I was in a group uh, in high school it was called D to the S it actually was a, a real popular group an underground group in Chicago and um, as I was doing that some of the, some acts approached me about doing music for them now I only made music for me to uh, you know do my thing to but um, how'd they hear about you I mean I was, we was doing shows you know what I'm saying underground scene underground scene basically um, actually, at the time, there was something called The Box. Ah, uh, right. yeah. <laughs> and um, we had actually uh, shot a video, just, you know, this is a little bit of history a lot of people don't know. We had shot a video for one of our songs. This was uh, right after I graduated from high school. Um, the, the director of Soul Food, uh, George Tillman, actually shot our first video because he's from Chicago, too. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, George did a lot more than Soul Food, but yeah. that's it. that was it. People were most knowing by it. Yeah. And um, so we had got it played on the box. Um, and it was like one of the first Chicago videos to get played on the box, um, you know, independently. And um, so that kind of let everybody know I was there. How you know long ago was that? That was like 92. 92, yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? So from there I started... Um, you know, I, even though I had the little video on the box, I was on, I, I was working at Walgreens. I don't okay. know if, if uh, so oh, yeah. I oh, Okay, so <laughs> I was a bus boy, I mean a uh, stock boy at uh, Walgreens. So like Saturday night, I would uh, be on stage doing the show. Maybe I opened for Cypress Hill one particular night. Mm -hmm. And then um, Sunday morning, I was back in the aisle stocking the women's feminine products. You gotta so, eat. So, you gotta eat. Right? So somebody came in and was like, when you just on stage last night? <laughs> yeah, but you know. So You got wings? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like so Or did they have wings at this I'm sorry. No, I don't know. Go back in. They probably did have wings though. But anyway. No um, So we went from there and um I basically stopped producing other groups. And um, one of the groups that had came to me was this group called Do It Down. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what really started the... Uh, actually, I started with a group called Psycho Drama, which is like a real... A lot of people don't know about Psycho yeah, Drama. You know what I'm saying? So they, they Do It Down saw me what I was doing for the Psycho Drama and couldn't yeah. let them have it to themselves. So, yeah. you know, and then eventually, some years later, we did the Pope Pimp record. Yeah. And that was the start of my career. Hey. You notice I'm smiling. I don't mean to cut you off, but okay. I'm from the Midwest too, okay. you know, and I know the twisters and the do or die and the psycho drama. I said a lot of people don't know about that, and you're a lot well known for like doing stuff with Twister. Did that start with doing the do or die stuff? Well, with Twister, because um, the stuff I was doing for do or die is where my and psycho drama was where my sound came from, like my own signature sound. With Twista, you know, but I was a hip hop artist, so what ended up happening was Twista and me were working on a project called Resurrection. It's actually a lost Twister's album, Twister album. And um so we were working on that project and when the uh we we started I started a company called Creators Way. Uh Seawall was the acronym. We actually did a deal for Twista with Atlantic, the adrenaline rusher 
album was actually on that label. Oh, really? Yeah, so um, prior to that, I was working with him on the hip-hop record. Then when I started working with Do or Die, because that company also, we also released the Do or Die project independently before Rap Up I came in. Mm. So I had knew him from doing that project. Um, one of my partners was trying to manage him and Do or Die at the time. So it ended up just all being an in-house thing. And we got him to feature on the the Pope Pimp record, yeah. and then that's what led to me and him working on Adrenaline Rush and all the other projects that we worked on together. Okay. So, yeah. you know, it was just basically everybody was in Chicago, right time. Uh, I was doing my thing on the music, you know, they was rhyming, and it just all came together. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, I have two questions for you, and um, we kind of, one is going to piggyback off what you were just talking about. Sorry to cut you off. But um, the other one, I'm talking. <laughs> no, <it's like laughs> the first question is, um, you know, because obviously you started off as an MC, you right. know, in the underground, and now you're more so known for your beats because you did production for more popular artists like Do or Die. Right. So how did you become the infamous legendary Traxton, more so known for your production rather than an MC? Well, like I said, when we started that company and. Um, we worked on a Do or Die record and then we worked on a Twister record and Pope Pimp was such a big hit that um, just common sense said, we don't, I'm going to take a little time from the rhyming and produce these records. You know, we had opportunities with, uh, through Rap Alive and Atlantic Records and, you know, so many production opportunities. It was just basically, I always knew that I can get back to rhyming, but these opportunities was here right now. So I just concentrated on that. Okay, so you're staying focused on one particular thing because you know that's going to be where your bread is coming from. Basically. Okay, you know that's a good thing. And I also um, had a question for you in reference to the name Traxter, the legendary Traxter. Yeah. How did you get that name? Well, you know, I really don't know exactly how I put it <laughs> together, but um, it started out, you know, being hip hop, uh, Traxter, and from Chicago. Trax, um, when I was a DJ, there was a record, a company called Trax Records, which right. was a house rec, uh, music company, and somehow that worked into I was making tracks and Traxster, and then tr uh, watching the graffiti artists who had uh, they, they they often put stirs behind their name like uh, Flipster or whatever. So being so involved in hip hop, I just took the tracks and put the stir behind it. I used to tag it in my little ah. places, and then. Somewhere when I started rhyming and the ego came in, the legendary got attached <laughs> to it, you know what I'm saying? So then from there, um, you know, it just continued on. Um, and I thought it was just cool to, you know, already try to prophesize my career. There you know it is. You claim that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you, we doing Twister. We doing Do or Die. Crucial Conflict. No, I didn't get to do nothing with Crucial Conflict. We was just all part of the same movement. But after the Twister record, I did Mystical, um, Still Smoking. I did um, a bunch of soundtracks. Um, this was Cat from New York, Mike Geronimo. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, which was a you know was weird because people didn't knew me for you know more street music than hip hop. Yeah. So when I could just flip back to that, it was weird for them. But everybody liked it. What did you um, do with Mike Geronimo? Uh, song Vendetta. He had his last album um, on TVT was called Vendetta. Okay. And I did a title track for that. It's actually a video, so y'all can uh, YouTube it and see what we Mike did. Geronimo. Y'all yeah. <laughs> got that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So from there, um, continue to work with Do or Die, continue to work with Twister. Um, what else did I do? I don't want to forget anybody. Uh, recently, um, Tech 9 right. Dub C, Sebo. You know, I've been kind of moving around the country lately. Mm -hmm. In uh, 2005, I did a record on... Uh, Emancipation of Mimi, right. which was uh, right. one and only, one and uh, that ended up giving me a Grammy nomination. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so um, I did that, and a lot of other people, I don't want to forget them, but just a lot of other acts, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I do, I think the tracks the thing is really the ability to do any style of music, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I do my West Coast dudes, you know, I'm down here in the South now. Politic with the cats down here for to do some of that. Um, help develop the Midwest sound, you know what I'm saying? And then I deal with the East Coast cats. So that's my thing is I want to be able to, to do music in all the different um, 
places that yeah. hip-hop happened. That's interesting you say that though. I mean, in reference to you traveling, na you know, nationwide and, and and dealing with East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, and down south. And as you know, right now, in reference to hip hop or popular culture, the South is number one on the map. Right. So, yeah. um, what kind of plans do you have in reference? Because you obviously just moved to Atlanta, right? Right. Right. What plans do you have with working with some of these Southern artists? Well, you know, really, um, I feel like one bad rap that the South is getting right now is everybody saying, well, uh, it all sounds the same, it's one sound. And here I am in the Midwest um, with a sound that I developed that um, some people are utilizing here and there, but not on an industry scale, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's not coming for me for every record that comes out. So my plans down here was A, it's a hub for me to get with everybody, even, you know, my cats from the East Coast, my cats from the West Coast all come through. Since this is Black Hollywood. Of you course. Know what I'm yeah. mm -hmm. But beyond that, it's like, um, you know, Do or Die, Twister had a big influence on what ended up being the South Sound. Uh -huh. So me authoring that sound, I just feel like it's natural for me to come down here and bring um, what I do and add it to what's going on down here to give it a different twist. Right. So that's really my um That's what plan. we need, tracks. <laughs> that's what we need, a breath of fresh air, something different. Yeah. Definitely. So do you see, I'm sorry, I have to ask this, but <laughs> in hip-hop, what do you see? Do you see an evolution? Do you see any type of change? Do you see a different sound coming soon? Well, you know, I one of the people who were instrumental in getting me to come down here, because I was so... Uh, set in what I was doing, you know what I'm saying, like in Chicago, um, my status is a creator, you know what I'm saying, like of the, the movement, so it's like No Adido, um, who's uh, famous for uh, a lot of, he did all the early common records, like he was on a different side, of t uh, um, I, uh, I won't say town, because he's both, we both on the south side, but most of the acts I developed was on the west side. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he has a comment and Kanye, um, that lineage, you know what I'm saying? So we spent our whole careers in Chicago and said little things to each other but never really vibed. He's, he's in Atlanta. So what happened was I came to visit, and he's the one who convinced me, you know, you need to come down here, come on, listen, we can do this, we can do that. So he and I are doing a lot of work together now. And the, the thing that's really important for me is we're developing new directions to take hip-hop in, you know what I'm saying? Him being on one side of it with the more traditional hip-hop mentality and me having, you know, I make street music half the time, you know what I'm saying? So, not that he doesn't, but you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just different sounds. And um, basically, he and I have been bouncing ideas around and other producers have come in, so we got this whole little, well, we're gonna take hip-hop thing going on right now as being, you know, the producers in hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? So I think that um, it's definitely some fresh some fresh air coming back, you know what I'm saying? Like my my iTunes catalog over here is filled with all the classic hip-hop, you know what I'm saying, from the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. And we're going back to listening. I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we're going back to some of the um, drum machines and emulating the, the way the music was recorded then, you know what I'm saying, to give it a more of a vibe than just like this sterile digital music. So you're not going to use four track recorders and stuff? Oh, we're not going to do all okay, that, but, okay. but we're, we're going to invent something new, but it's like um, reference where it came from, you know right. what I'm saying, and then come up with something new. So it's really exciting for me, you know, I, I really am enjoying my time in Atlanta so far because I'm around so many creative people and we exchange an information and Doing that whole night. It's gonna be a monster. It sounds refreshing. Yeah. What I think is real cool about the whole situation, a lot of people just out there trying to get the money, but you have a general care about the music and hip hop and want to make a progression. Out of all the people that you have worked with, who would you most like to work with and why? Out of the people that I've already had worked with, or well, you work with a lot of people mm -hmm. who haven't I worked with that you would like to and why? Um. Let me see. That's a tough, tough question because, um, let me think. Um, I want to work with everybody. It's real hard for yeah, me to yeah. narrow it down. Like every, 
because I develop sounds and I develop them based on the artist. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm really psych psychological about it. Like I get an artist in the room and I start tapping on something and I'm watching their reaction. You, get that vibe. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that'll send me in a direction that I might not normally go in just sitting in the room by myself. It's gotta be a marriage. So I mean like artists I like, it's a, it's a bunch of artists I like, you know what I'm saying? I'm actually starting to get off the Mariah placement was important for me to start going into other directions, R and B, pop, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I say that the the range is too big for me to narrow down. I'm gonna work with this person or that person. Right. But what I want to do is, um, you know, just develop new things and work with new genres of music more than new people. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? So like, like I said, I'm getting into the pop thing. R and B, I've I've always had that hip hop R and B thing going on the singles that I do for people like Get It Wet for Twister or right. Pope Pimpin' and all that. Yeah. Um, and then the Mariah Joint, of course. But it's like. Um, that's what I really want to do. I'm, I, you know, I, I get kind of bored with music sometimes when it's the same sound, or the same thing. So like now I'm trying to find new ways, new places to take it, and that sometimes that means tr changing genres. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I think that hip hop is suffering because everybody's changing genres. Some of the best. We were just talking about this the other night that um, hip hop sales are declining because the best producers in hip hop have started doing other music and don't really care about hip hop no more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, not, and I shouldn't say don't, uh, they don't care about it because I don't know their personal feelings, but if you look at people like Timbaland, um, who was originally an R&B producer but had a big influence over hip hop production, and then now he's concentrating on the Nelly Furtado's and uh, um, Justin Timberlake's. Then you take Pharrell, same difference. Right. You take, you know what I'm saying, all the power, Scott Storch, um, Dre to an extent, you know what I'm saying? It's like that's what though these are the individuals that made hip hop special. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So when you take our best talent out of the genre, of course pop music is gonna do better than that now. Or you know what I'm saying, these other um types of music, R and B, whatever. It just looks like um, you know, in reference to that, you know, times are changing mm -hmm. and um our culture is definitely changing. So it looks like that they're maturing into a whole other direction and we need uh in my opinion, in reference to hip hop, we need something new, something fresh and we need different producers to actually show us something more creative so then the youth and the other people within hip hop can see that, hey, you know, it's not just this, it's not just that, but it's this. Right. So that's you, brother. Oh, I'm, uh, you know, I definitely, I'm definitely trying to do it, and like, you know, like I said, it was a, it was a big move for me to come to Atlanta, um, because I've always been such a die-hard Midwest Chicago dude. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, now that I'm here, um, and I'm in this creative environment, you know, I really do want to do something special, something to elevate my legacy beyond where it's at. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I know the only way to do that is to. Um, you know, really work hard to recreate the feeling that I used to get when I was listening to rap when I was a kid, you know what I'm saying? And it was special, and, and that's why I went back to the classics, and yeah. I'm still a kid when it comes on, you know what I'm saying? I, it comes on, and I, I'm dancing, and you know what I'm saying, and all that, I'm a grown-ass man, dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? dancing, but, you know what I'm saying, like, that music gives me that feeling, and, and I'm not, it's not the sound, it's not the artist, it's the feeling that I'm trying, the energy that I'm trying to re recreate, you know what I'm saying? And that don't mean corny music or none of that, it just means I need people to love it like I loved it, you know what I'm saying? And not it just be, um, I don't want to do crime, so I don't do rap, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So. Is there a medium for you, like, in reference to the love for the culture, the love for the energy of the music? And the money? Well, you know, I'm a hustler, so of course I got to get the money. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? You can get the money and be creative at the same time. You know, you just have to be, like I said, it's a lot of psychology for me. So I could be work working with an artist that doesn't know anything about hip-hop and interjected myself into it, where they think it's just a new idea, but I know, okay, this is something that, you know, this goes with hip hop. Or the, when I when I say hip hop, I mean all rap as the component of hip hop right. that it is. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't necessarily look at a soldier boy or a um, act that doesn't necessarily reflect the um, stereotypical 
um, image of hip hop today um, and say that's not hip hop. It's all hip hop because it, rap is hip hop. But, um, you know, it's my job to, or what I want to do, uh, interject and bring, you know, keep that feeling alive in it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm going to um, sneak it in on artists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when they look to listen better, they're going to be like, oh, that's a. That's a boogie down production pattern. Mm, that's that a sounds real, great. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited about that. How about it? Yeah. Now we got the legendary trackster as far as the producer. We know you're a writer. I mean, do we see something foreseen in the near future as far as the legendary trackster, the artist? Definitely. Um, I'm working on a project right now. Um, okay. It's coming. You know, it's actually an extension of a project that I finished. <laughs> that then I said, no, it's not. Once I got with around some other producer, I was like, no, I gotta take it up a couple of notches. So I'm not gonna discuss the title or anything like that at this point. But it's like um, a tracks the album will is in the works and it will be out by the end of the year. That is what's up. Yeah, the end of this year. End of this year. Yeah. Yeah.